Hey guys, it's Helen Vandenberg here of GetClientsFast.net and I am out in the sunshine. So I don't know when you're watching this, but this is like the first sunny day we've had. I'm sorry about the shades, but it is so bright. I can't actually see the screen without it. So I'm gonna be cool in my shades today, if that's all right with you. Meg Mog the Wonder Dog is roaming around the garden. No wonder she will almost certainly start howling or woofing or farting in the background. So I hope that's okay with you. But today, let me tell you what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna be talking about um, sales objections, how it's the, oh, I loved talking to people, I love coaching people, but oh my God, what about the sales objections? So if you are selling yourself, you are selling a consultancy, a coaching, uh, a transformation service, a healing service, this is the part of the client enrollment um, system or process that often um, where we lose the sale. So first of all, let's think about what are sales objections. So sales objections for me, the way I think of it, is they're just questions that haven't been answered yet. So this is a bit where often, when you've told them the price, that they will then say, ah, oh, yeah, um, what about this? So often you have got to a point in your sales conversation where you're like, oh, they're buying it, they're loving this, and let me just tell you how much it is. And then when you're actually getting moving closer to the sale, then this is often when people will give you objections. And like I say, the way I think of them are just questions they haven't answered, that you haven't answered for them yet. So what are the most common ones and what can you do about them? So for me the most the most frequent one that any coach consultant trainer any salesperson will hear is something around the money it'll be i can't afford it i really want it but i can't afford it so there's always the money one there's also people worry about time um, how much time is this going to take um, i'm not sure i can fit that in i'm not sure i can make the calls at those times or i don't think i can travel that far for the sessions so there's usually a sort of practicality thing and the other key one is i have to ask someone else so i have to um, ask my husband or my wife or my business partner so that is deferring the decision to someone else who has not been through the process with you so let me give you a few tips about things you can do around this so apologies for the flight hair but hey you know we're outside it's gorgeous it's it's well where I where I am when I'm doing this it's spring look at my daffs and uh, so let's just crack on so one of the first things you can do is preempt the questions so I want you here's your exercise I want you to jot down your offer so what is it that you're offering maybe you're doing a high-end coaching package maybe it's a consultant or you're selling to a corporate whatever it is in a paragraph or less what is your offer just get the nuts and bolts of it down and then i want you to write down what i think of as faqs or saqs frequently asked questions or what should be frequently asked questions um i want you to jot down all the questions you think someone could have about that so will it work for me will this work in my niche so to be honest i have people come to me and they'll say well yeah but i'm not a life coach or i'm not a business coach will this work for me i'm an esoteric healer you know will your stuff work for me um so what are the common questions then so i want you to get at least 20 because if you have hang on two zero or two zero depending on which way you look 20 i want you to do 20 of those um you always need to do more than you think you do you so when you get to 10 and you're running out seriously you have not got anywhere near all of them if you stop at 10. so i want you to get as many of those questions that things you've heard before things that you imagine would be going on in their head and then i'd like you to buddy up with someone preferably someone who's not in exactly the same business as you and say niche or niche if you're in America um, because someone like you know ask your mum ask a friend ask someone who does a different kind of work and give them the outline and just say what concerns might you have or worries or thoughts what would be going through your head before you made a buying decision because people who are not in your world will see it much more clearly than people who do the same thing as you. So I want you to get another 10 questions from them. Um, and you can ask some people who are fellow coaches, consultants, healers, whatever you do. But it's really nice to get that different perspective, particularly from a different age range or someone who's, because like, you know, my mum will ask what she thinks is a daft question. She'll say, oh, you know, I probably don't understand, but you know, if I was, it was me, I'd worry about this. And that's often the golden nugget. She has no idea how brilliant she is because she will say something that is absolute common sense, but is pivotal. And I will have been so in my head, I would have forgotten about it. So preempt them. So I want you to write down all of those concerns and queries. And then I want you to write 
and practice answers for them. Now, I am not suggesting for a moment that you robotically go, aha, you have asked the money question. I am going to read off my script here. But to be honest, if they are, there's probably like the top five to eight queries that will come up every time and I guarantee money will be one of them. So um, you want to have not have on your vital sales call where thousands of pounds or dollars could be at stake. You do not want that to be the first time that you have ever uttered a response to that. So I urge you, and this is where people who make sales or client enrollment look effortless. Actually, I don't know if you've seen one of my other videos around the 10,000 hours of practice. It's because they've got lots of experience. They've done lots of practice. Well, why don't you practice without it being a financially risky opportunity for you? You need to practice. So you start doing it out loud. You know, talk to the dog, have a sales conversation with the dog or the cat or the horse and um, practice it. And then once you've got a few under your belt, I recommend you buddy up with someone and do swap sales calls, do your practice. So um, that's the first thing, preempt them and practice. So you can, you want to get comfortable with how would you, you would answer those. And obviously you may need some more tips on that. So keep watching these videos and we'll share more about that. The other way you can preempt them is by talking about them in whatever sales process you take them through. So for example, for the question around, you know, the classic is, well, I need to ask my husband. A lot of the women that I work with um, may not be the sole, uh, the main breadwinner in their family. And even though they've got a business, they may feel that they still need to or want to um, negotiate and talk to their partner around um, around uh, whether or not they should make this investment. So that's a pretty big challenge for any salesperson because the client or the potential client has been through a process with you. So in my case, they've probably seen some social media posts, been through possibly a webinar or a workshop or a conference and then come into a one-on-one -on -one call. So by this point, they may have had two or three or four hours or more of con connection with me. They'll know whether I'm a right fit for them. Now, um, you know, like everyone, I'm a bit Marmite. I'm going to have people who love me and people who hate me. People who like, yeah, I want to work with this person. And other people who go like, for God's sake, why has she always got a farting dog in her videos? <laughs> you know, and that's fine. Um, I want to work with these ones, not those. There's plenty of other people for them. So um, the challenge is if somebody is going through that process and then they introduce another person, um, that other person, I mean, the thing is, partners are usually the polar opposite of the, I don't know if you've experienced this, but many of us go out and find a partner, whether it's a business partner or a life partner, who frankly is the polar opposite of us. We, that's the yin and yang. So for example, you know, you know me, I'm a bit bonkers, I'm very creative, I'm very energetic, and my husband is amazing, and he's very logical and analytical. If I ever want anyone to do due diligence, he is the per first person I'm gonna speak to. If I want someone to enthuse me and inspire me, I'm probably going to see one of my coaching buddies, yeah? So the thing is, you've had this close relationship with someone, and then if they introduce another person around uh, the question of how do I, you know, oh, I need to speak to my husband, well, if they just go off and speak to them, the chances are that person is going to try and protect them, you know? Uh, whether it's a man or a woman or a business partner, usually people you know, who are in close relationships, they want to protect that partner. They don't want them to make daft or serious mistakes. So the chances are they're going to, you know, none of us like change. They want to protect them from doing anything risky. So how do you preempt that? Well, one of the things we do is on we, before people get to speak to one of my team or me, we have them fill out a questionnaire. And one of the questions we use is, what um, are you the sole decision maker in your business um, or it says and um, if not who else needs to be involved with this and we get them we insist that they bring that person onto the call so um, because the thing is if they genuinely and there's nothing wrong with content consulting your partner or telling your partner exactly um, what you're doing and, and getting their blessing but you know what they aren't especially if it's a woman versus man relationship they're gonna be very logical and a little they have not had the nine hours of, of contact with you um, and often people partner up with people who are very different from them so they're gonna be they're gonna have a whole different judgment set and values so we ask them to come on the call um, and if they don't 
you know, frankly, it's probably a bit of waste of both of our times because either you're going to go through this process and then the person is going to come out of context and then go and ask permission from somebody who knows nothing about the buying process uh, and what you offer um, or they will go and ask for permission again I, I, I tend to work with women who don't ask for permission who just say this is what I want to do so I want to work with pe women who are decisive um, committed and coachable and that they were resourceful that they will go like I've made my decision I now need to just tell my husband this is what I'm doing so another way you can do it is by helping coaching them through that so if you happen to get on the call and at that point they say you know I really want to run this by my husband then one of the things you can do is help coach them prepare them how to have that conversation so they're not asking for permission but they're actually telling them this is what I want to do because the thing is we work with lots of women who have their husbands have no idea how important their business is to them and the same will be for you it might you might have a woman who perhaps you're you help people women in their 50s with hormone problems and you know they've poured their heart out to you and they know that you have the solution to help them move forward with this but their partner may have no idea how important this is to them and might just say well you know surely you can just go to the doctors and get some HRT or something so that's what we would do so in terms of preempting you want to make sure you are really versed in what you know what are the questions they're likely to ask you need to then go even further so 20 of your own another 10 from other people and then you need to be practicing your responses to those okay um, not so as you re robotically repeat them all the time but so as at least when you that comes up you've at least got the language in there I used to do lots of public speaking and I can tell you the times when it just rocked and it looked so effortless that was because I was able to pluck anecdotes out of the air because I'd said them so many times before so what else have I got for you and then with preempt think about your enrollment process can they fill in a questionnaire do you have someone else do a triage what um, tacky more calls a triage call a little taster call a, um, uh, a, a sort of a pre-call call with them to see if they're a fit um, and if there is is if for example one of the quite the and then we moved on to the thing around I have to ask another person then that's the case of um, uh, you actually helping them prepare the conversation they're going to have um, or making sure they've you've dealt with that objection before you get to it so I'm going to just do a couple more points um, the other thing that tends to um, block people is the way that we describe the price so we tend to talk about you know so the the program is this and you get this this and this so you might get this many sessions with me you get this many hours of treatment you get five days of consulting or whatever it is but we tend not to describe the price in terms of outcome. So people who are really effective at sales and overcome the objections or don't even have the objections have talked much more about the outcomes that the clients will get rather than the package, the, pr the pricing, the number of sessions. So you want to make sure that you're describing your program or your offering in terms of outcome. Another way of um, dealing with uh, objections especially if people are saying things like you know I just you know I really want to do it but I can't afford it is to just what I do is get real with them so in my funnel at this point by the time I or one of my team might get to speak to someone they've spent at least an hour on a webinar or, in a, or maybe half day or a day in a workshop with me um, they will have booked an appointment, they will have prepared a form, they've thought about it, they've then spent another 45 minutes to an hour on a call with me, so or one of my team. So by this point, we're several hours in to them focusing on the challenge that I can help them with. Now the thing is, if we get to the end of it and they say, you know and bearing in mind we've pre-screened people so we only speak to people who say yeah I can definitely you know I'm ready to invest in my business or I have access to funds to invest in my business so at this point you've already had massive conversation with them about how difficult their situation is now sorry I just need to move this to low power mode uh, how difficult their situation is now how much they want this thing that you offer and then if they kind of come to the point and they're going yeah but you know I really can't afford it I think it's uh, for me I'm pretty ballsy I'll just say like hang on a minute okay we've just spent an hour talking about how this is vital for you and that you know this is the the, the next step for you and 
what's going to happen if you don't get this fixed in six months? Where are you going to be in a year from now? Where are you going to be? Is it worth putting up with this for, three, for another year or three years or whatever? So that might not be your style. So you, you might want to do it very gently and very like drawing it out of them. I'm pretty like, come on, you've told me you have a passion to deal with to help these kind of women do this. You have been running your business for four years and you've never yet had consistent sales or it's been like this and this and this and you are sick and tired of this. And yet what you're telling me now, you said you're coachable, you're decisive, you're resourceful, but you're now telling me that a thing like you know, finding the money is gonna get in the way of what you are saying is your life's purpose. So my experience is that people find the money for the things they really, really want to do. And if your screening processes up to the point where you have a call with them are strong enough, you should only be getting to speak to people who are, and I say a call, it could be an appointment, it could be a meeting, it could be a coffee, but you should only be speaking to people who are massively committed to getting that problem solved by that point. So by this point, I, that's what I call them out on and I'll just say, you know, and it's fine. I would rather, you know, it's absolutely fine if it's a no, that's a different thing and that's perfectly fine if it's like, hell, it sounds great but you're just not for me, the, the dog stuff drives me mad or, you know, you're in your sunglasses, what's all that about? If that's absolutely fine or, you know what, what I'm really looking for is a one-on-one -on -one coach or what I'm really looking for is someone to help me with Twitter ads, it's fine, that's not a problem great, I can help you with that, let me find someone for you or let me point you in the right direction. Always happy to do that. But if they've just told you they desperately want what you've got to offer, they, this is gonna make a big difference in their life and they think that the, whatever you're offering is the right thing for them, then I would call them out and be like, okay, so let's, let's see how resourceful we can be. There's always ways to find what is important for you. So that's kind of how, how, I, how I start with that one. So just call them out on it. Because and I was given this advice recently, is that you know when you're on a call with someone, you've got to be playing at your A game. Now this is not about giving free coaching, but it's like, if you're a mentor, coach or therapist, you know, are you gonna let them get away with that when, to, are you gonna let them give up on their dreams when they're working with you, when it gets a little bit tough? You know, if it was that easy, Everyone would be doing it. We'd all be millionaires. We'd all be out there and be like, yeah, I'm on the beach. I'm a millionaire. The people who make it are the people who work through that fear. And that's exactly why they need the, co the support of someone like you. So those are my thoughts on, for today on overcoming objections. So we talked about, you know, what are objections? They're just questions they haven't, you haven't answered yet. So one of the things you can do is make sure all of your marketing and everything that happens before you speak to them focuses on those um, on those key, you know, those key things that they that you know that are going on in their head already. So you've already addressed them. You can put it in your pre-screening forms. You can put it in your marketing. You can put it in little videos like this. Um, the other thing that we talked about was um, price versus outcome. So making sure that you are focusing on the value, the results they will get, not just all the nuts and bolts and bits and pieces they'll 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 receive. We also talked about what if they're not the decision maker? What if they've, they've kind of, it's not their decision to make? How, how do you handle that? And we talked about getting real. So guys, I would love to hear what you think about um, that, how that has been helpful for you. And if you know you are ready to scale up your business, if you know this is your year when you want to have a flood of sales inquiries and you want to nail that whole client enrollment process and get your work out to the world, then I'd love to invite you into some training I'm doing. Um, I've got a masterclass running at the moment. It's called um, Three Clients in 30 Days, how to uh, design, market and fill your next high your first or next high-end program and you can access it by going to all the w's income and impact Dot net income and impact.net because I know I want you to make the impact that you want in the world and it's my job to make sure you get paid for it so income and impact.net I'll try and remember to put that in the link below anyway guys let me know um, come and join me on social media getclientsfast.net it's Helen Vandenberg and you can uh, access that masterclass on income and income impact <laughs> Net. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off for now. Have an awesome day. Take care. Bye for now.